Today we are going to be running the Friedelcraft's acylation of toluene with acetic anhydride to produce p methyl acetophenone following the prep listed in Vogel. I ran the procedure at half scale using 37.5 grams of anhydrous aluminum chloride, 70 ml of toluene, and 13 grams of acetic anhydride. The aluminum chloride was then added with strong stirring to the 70 ml of toluene. The flask was cooled in an ice bath and the rest of the apparatus was then assembled. The 13 grams of acetic anhydride was added to the oversized addition funnel and a gas strap with dilute sodium hydroxide was attached. The acetic anhydride was added over the course of 30 minutes. There was some solid that built up where the acetic anhydride was dripping into the flask, so I knocked it down before continuing. I switched out the ice bath for a water bath and heated until boiling for 30 minutes to push the reaction to completion. The mixture was then quenched into a bath of 75 grams of crushed ice with 75 mils of concentrated hydrochloric acid.
I transferred the mixture to a separatory funnel and added 15 mils of DCM. Then I removed the organic layer and replaced it with the aqueous layer, followed by an additional 15 mils of DCM. After shaking, the DCM layer was removed and added to the toluene solution. The combined organic layers were shaken with 25 mils of 10% sodium hydroxide solution, then 25 mils of water, and finally dried over in hydrous magnesium sulfate. A simple distillation was set up and the DCM and toluene were distilled off. I then set up for a fractional vacuum distillation to distill over our product. Despite having a fractional column, no clean fractions were observed. The temperature just very slowly increased as the distillate came over, and it went from a range of 74 to 84 degrees Celsius. I wasn't certain whether this was due to the slow compositional change of the vapor, or due to the loss of vacuum in the system. As I didn't have a vacuum gauge at the time, I wasn't certain what the pressure in the system was, nor if it was changing over time. Because of the inconsistent boiling point, I was quite concerned about the purity of the product, and as such I decided to run some more tests. I took the density of both of the samples and they were identical within my measuring error. The average was 1.0029 grams per milliliter, with the theoretical value being 1.004 grams per milliliter, which is again within my measuring error. While maybe not a very conclusive test, both samples also smelt identical, with no detectable note of toluene, and they seem to match the odor description of the p-methylacetophenone very well. In search of some more conclusive results, I decided to run the iodoform test for methyl ketones on both of the samples. I first had to prepare the testing reagent by dissolving 5 grams of iodine and 10 grams of potassium iodide in 50 ml of water. Then 100 mg of the sample was measured out and dissolved in a mixture of 2 mL of water with 1.5 mL of dioxane. 
2 mL of 5% sodium hydroxide solution was then added, and the testing reagent was added dropwise until it maintained a dark coloration of iodine for 2 to 3 minutes. A yellow precipitate of iodoform was seen in both of the samples, and sodium hydroxide solution was then added dropwise until the iodine coloration disappeared. The solution was then diluted with an equal amount of water and allowed to sit for 15 minutes. Both of the samples produced a solid yellow precipitate, indicating a positive result for methyl ketones, which is a very strong indicator that we actually have the product that we're looking for. Despite the abnormal boiling point during the vacuum distillation, these tests show that the desired product is at least present in the two samples in significant quantity, which is adequate enough for my future plans with it. The final yield was 12 grams, a 71% yield, and compared to Vogel's 86% yield, it's quite acceptable given that we ran it at half scale.